A new and difficult portrait is now emerging of what played out inside that nightclub behind me here. The SWAT team captain talking for the first time, and we have new video tonight of the moments before the gunfire and then during that massacre. And when the SWAT teams blew through that nightclub wall, afterward, the wall riddled with bullet holes. Tonight, we also have major new developments on the gunman, who the FBI had interviewed three times, and we have now learned he was under FBI surveillance for 10 months at one point. How did he get those guns in recent days without that federal background check alerting anyone at the FBI? And of course, the human face of this horrible story, the images of so many of the young people who have died. Tonight here, we have the list. But we begin with that SWAT team captain in ABC's Gio Benitez here in Orlando. Tonight, chilling new details about the deadly rampage and the three-hour standoff between police and a determined terrorist. Late night, couples dancing at the popular gay club Pulse. And just after 2 a.m., Omar Mateen arrives heavily armed with a high-powered assault rifle, a handgun, multiple rounds of ammunition. Near an entrance, he starts to fire. An off-duty police officer responds, then a shootout. And Mateen moves deeper inside the club to the main dance floor. 25-year-old Amanda Alviar is there, partying with friends. Her brother shows us this Snapchat video she recorded. Over the music, gunshots. Amanda Alviar becomes one of the gunman's 49 victims. Ivory McNeil still has the club's bracelet on his wrist. Like so many others, he scrambled off this back patio, escaping. I could still hear the gunshots. They were just one after the other, like constantly just pop, 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 pop. Police officers now rushing into the club, exchanging gunfire with the terrorist. Mateen retreating to these bathrooms. In one, as many as 20 people huddled together. But Mateen enters another, taking four to five hostages. This man, Orlando, was there, playing dead. I was uncomfortably wedged between my shoulders up against the back wall, my face, my forehead up against the toilet bowl. Stiff there for three hours, uncomfortable. <laughs> so you played dead for yeah. three hours yes. straight. At 2.30 a.m., the gunman calls 911, hanging up twice before a dispatcher calls him back. And there, on the phone, Mateen pledges allegiance to ISIS. And he was telling them, stop bombing ISIS. Stop bombing ISIS. For hours, police negotiating with the killer. But at 5 a.m., the SWAT team leader says Mateen threatens to strap explosive vests on his hostages. He did say he, he had a vest. Um, and he did talk about putting rest on some of the, the hostages. It's a turning point. SWAT teams move in using controlled explosives and heavy machinery like this to break holes in the wall of the club. The suspect came out of that hole himself, uh, armed with a handgun and a long gun, engaged uh, in a gun battle with officers. This video capturing the barrage of bullets in the night. The killer dead, and daylight revealing the wall riddled with bullet holes. And Gio is with us now with a really critical number that's just been released from the hospital tonight. That's right. Some people have already been released, but it's important to remember, David, 34 people are still in the hospital, some in critical condition tonight. Condition. All right, Gio, thanks so much.